The Olden World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 379 Same Old Mornings. In other news, there's a certain Griffin ambassador who is very ticked at you lot right now. Something about finally getting interesting neighbors, and then you're only in for a single day. She's been by my office thrice to complain that I gave that room to someone who won't be sticking around. Gerardo's head was drooped, seated in the bridge with a talon raised against the morning sun, listening to Ernby over the soundstone. Ah, yes, that is indeed regrettable. I believe I encountered her once in a hallway while performing some task of a green pink chick, fully added, with a half-awake nod, and a hat. Any other important stuff for me to know, Gramps? I was looking forward to sleeping in. Then you do that, Ernby's voice crackled. It's not like I'm rolling in free time myself. Though, if all this about your kind's reputation in the Empire is bothering you, she'd be the one to ask if it's really that bad. Valet blinked. What, like a random ambassador has nothing better to do than hang out with us over some magical long-distance telephone? I mean, okay. Well, she's not about right now, but I can put her over to you next time she comes poking around if you're feeling up to it. Now, I have to get back to work. Take care of yourselves, kids. The soundstone went dim as the connection was severed. Jardo shrugged, turning to Valet. Well, it sounds as though nothing ill is afoot in Ironridge. I do hope they manage to make contact with Riverfall soon, however. But as the old Adarge say, no news is good news. Yeah, something like that. Valet's eyelids twitched and she rubbed them with a hoof from where she sat. I kind of do want to talk to her, the ambassador. Just to hear what she's got to say about the Empire and all that. Uh, I'm going back to bed. That's hardly the only reason she would be of interest to converse with, Jarlow remarked, halting her exit. She was Kira's neighbor for quite some time, and while we agreed not to trouble Miss Maple or the others with this, he furtively withdrew a chunk of moonglass from a pocket in his uniform, twinkled it, and put it back away, she could provide valuable insight about the purpose of this dubious quest. Oh, yeah, Molly blinked dully. Matt. Have you had any further thoughts on the matter? Gerardo asked, correcting the ship's course by a fraction of a degree. The river still vanished with the horizon. Their third day of travel hadn't brought any new terrain to bear that they hadn't seen before. Considering, as we are traveling to the Empire, the possibility of delivering or refusing to deliver it is a good deal more pressing than it may have been before. Valet bit her tongue. Even though it wasn't logical, her brain refused to stop connecting the ideas that moon glass affected bad ponies differently, and that the Empire didn't like bad ponies. Merely thinking about things couldn't set off a cutie mark, but it still made her skin crawl unpleasantly. Yeah, she decided. Still think we should keep the thing under wraps and not show it to anyone. At least, not unless we get a really good reason to. Agreed, Gerardo replied. At that moment, the Bridget's door slid open and Shinespark strolled inside, cast still clunking and coat looking freshly brushed, though her red and teal mane was as much of a spiky mess as ever. Her sapphire eyes were bright and awake, and she flicked her tail as she walked over to the pilot's chair. Uh, morning, Valet greeted, once again interrupted on her way out. Good morning, Shinespark chirped back, relieving the controls from Gerardo. Thanks for covering the night shift, you two. Thanks for covering the night shift, you two. I've got it for today. I just took a flight to wake up. The weather's nice, and it's surprisingly peaceful down below. Can't really recommend it before bed, but hopefully it'll still be this way in the evening. I didn't take the night shift, Valley grunted. Shinesburg blinked. Oh, well, in that case, you should definitely go for a fly. There's a storm on the mountains, but we've still got plenty of time before it comes down this low. Unless you're going back to Valley, loped straight past her and out the door. Mm-hmm, Maple murmured in her sleep, slowly drifting awake. The air was heavy with petrichor, but she couldn't hear the accompanying beating of rain over her head, causing her to lift her head and open her eyes in confusion. There was her room's window, swung open and wafting in fresh storm-charged air. There was starlight snug between her legs and curled up of her head, resting atop Maple's side. There was... Valet? The bad pony was in her bed as well, respectfully keeping her distance, but tucked into a comfortable, cat-like ball. Maple laid back down. She could see the rain outside the window and hear starlight and Valet's breathing, and there was all she needed to know. Her peaceful mornings hadn't been lost with Riverfall. 
Her rear hooves, hind quarters, and the tips of her ears were cold, but her sides and belly and forelegs were comfortably hot, forming the perfect mix where she could enjoy her warmth without being overwhelmed by it. The cold provided contrast, or a heat drain, and she shifted slightly, feeling her fur getting bent a little backwards as she briefly broke contact between the bed and her shoulder. Valet and Starlight both looked sound asleep and didn't appear to be anywhere close to wakefulness, but now that she was up and had smelled the morning air, Maple didn't think she was remotely close to rejoining them. But she couldn't move either, and that left her with nothing to do but think. Her and Starlight's room was plain, wasn't it? They had to do something to make it theirs, get some possessions or decorations maybe, but it was already well furnished and it wasn't like they were stopping anywhere things could be purchased anytime soon. She hadn't had the chance to bring much from Riverfall either. Her life hadn't been dedicated to accumulating things, especially the past two years, and most of what she had possessed had been smashed into vandalism. A brief stroke of wistfulness ran down her body and she brushed it off. Hasty or not, she had made her decision, and so far, it was a decision she was living with happily. The one thing she had saved from her home was a cracked mirror, formerly hanging by the door on a porch. The shards would have to be reassembled in a frame when she found some glue, but the biggest was propped on her bedside table, right where she could see it. Her pink-eyed expression stared back at her and smiled, and silently, Maple made a wish. Please, let Amber, Willow, and White Chocolate be happily enjoying themselves in Riverfall. Purely on instinct, she tried to roll over, reach out, and drag the lake closer with a hoof. Unfortunately, she was still pinned by Starlight and only succeeded in brushing the bad pony's hooves. <sighs> Voice snuffles, squirming in her sleep and cracking an eye. Oh, sorry, Maple mouthed back, quickly realizing her mistake. Yo, you're up, Valet mumbled, barely opening her mouth. I figured you'd have your own room, Maple murmured with a faint smile. You're allowed to join us if you want, though. I like waking up surrounded by friends. Valet sniffed and snorted, nose somehow plugged during her sleep. Few more hours. <sighs> Pretty sure you'd change your mind if I took you up fully on it off for iron flanks. Try me, Maple challenged. Or don't. I didn't mean to wake you up, though. Valet shrugged, hand curling and stretching heavily, with her foreleg straight forward and her hind leg straight back. Meh, she licked her lips. I was waiting for you anyway. Just wanted to tell you Amby was talking to us this morning. Said Torval went to town on Hemlock, but wasn't specific about whether the old stallion fully forgot you and Starlight. Still gonna keep him locked up in Anridge, though. No word from Riverfall, and reconstruction efforts are slow. He says right now they're exploring the flame district with unicorns for light and salvaging parts and tools to try and get the stuff they need to start rebuilding. Also, clearing out some jungle to the north using manual labor and trying to drill some inefficient amateur power wells. Any news from Riverfall? Maple asked, daring to perk her ears. Just said there wasn't, Wally well, shrugged. Sir so, Anflanks, he said he'd let us know if anyone showed up. Also, that they're running tests on the boats in the graveyard, but pretty much all of them need some major renovation at the very least. But it should be a day trip for a team of Pegasi, so once they know it's not a war zone or something, he's thinking of establishing contact by sending ponies there by air. Huh. Maple stared at the ceiling. I always thought of Riverfall as a place Pegasi flew away from since there weren't any there. But they could create trade that way, couldn't they? Valet rolled over, so she was fully facing Maple and much closer. Ask him yourself next time he's on. Anyway, it's raining super hard out, but I think I'm gonna wander, stretch my legs, and see if there's anything to do. Being on an airship with six others is unsurprisingly uneventful. Maple waved, seeing her off as Starlight shifted against her. Bye. End of chapter 379